hi there. I'm here today with an American alligator. Her name is Lucille. She's with us here at Nerd. And we want to tackle the question, is the American alligator the best pet reptile? Nah. No, it, it isn't. Not at all. In fact, I would say that the alligator is a terrible pet reptile. Uh, we've honestly covered very few reptiles that I could say make a worse pet than this one. But it very well may be the best pet crocodilian because they're all kind of terrible pets for most people. And uh, so that's sort of like saying, is this the best pet bear? They're all horrible, but this one very well may be the best of all the crocodilians, and crocodilians are stinking rad. I, I love crocodilians. They might be the coolest animals that have ever existed, including dinosaurs, which is just a bonkers thing to say because dinosaurs are unbelievably awesome. And the alligator of all the crocodilians is probably the friendliest of them all. But you can be the friendliest of all crocodilians and still eat people from time to time, so you know. Not perfect. So the question is not whether or not the alligator is the best pet reptile. It's not, not even close. But is it the best pet crocodilian? So if you're going to make the irrational decision to get a crocodilian, is the alligator the right pet reptile for you? To help you answer this question, we're going to take a look at the alligator based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the American alligator a score of one out of five. While they're the nicest crocodilian, they're enormous, right? This one's not even all that old or large, right? They're gonna get way bigger than this, especially males, many times this size. There will be no handling it at that point. You can interact with it, or maybe, you know, you and your 10 friends could carry it around, but for the most part, there, there won't be any handling it. Uh, you know, it is, it is the nicest crocodilian, which is huge. Like, if you're gonna have a 10-foot crocodilian, it darn well better be the nicest one. But they do get big enough to tear off an arm, to kill you, especially if they can pull you underwater. Uh, you know, if it grabs you and spins, it's gonna be a horrific day. So for the most part, once they get to a certain size, handling is gonna be really hard. Even, even this girl, I mean, she's, she's being nice, but she's big and she's powerful, she's potentially dangerous, and she's heavy. She's heavy to carry around. You're not gonna handle this just for the fun of it. I wanna take just a minute to thank our patrons at Patreon. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here at Nerd. Without you guys, I don't know how I would cover my hospital bills should things go awry with this alligator. And so I am just so thankful to have you guys. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for everything you allow us to do. And, and especially if this is the last video I ever film, I just want you guys to know it's been a real pleasure. If you look at this alligator's face all over it, it's pitted with tiny little pits. And these pits are very much like the Ampulli de Lorenzini that you see on sharks in that they detect even very slight movements in the water. This is like a sixth sense that crocodilians and sharks have, which is totally rad. So they can be in waters that are totally murky, they can't see at all, but they can feel animals moving around them and then bite their faces off. It's awesome. When it comes to care, we give the alligator a score of three out of five. Um, you know, really, actually, the care for an alligator isn't that difficult, it's not that complex, it's just the animal is enormous. And so it's gonna be really, really expensive. Uh, for starters, they're gonna need their own room in your house. So, you know, if you don't have an extra room, you gotta build an extra room. They're gonna need in that room a heated and filtered pool, essentially, like a legitimate pool. And they're gonna need a big basking spot with UVA and UVB basking bulbs. It's gotta be really hot and really large. Uh, that's gonna cost quite a lot. So, you know, it's expensive stuff. It's not hard stuff. It's sort of normal semi-aquatic reptile stuff. It's the same stuff you'd need for a red-eared slider, just if red-eared sliders were like eight feet long. And then there's food. And they're gonna need quite a bit of food. This is a, a really large animal after a while that has a pretty fast metabolism for a reptile. 
Uh, you can overdo it with food though, especially high fat foods. So definitely try to keep fat as a major consideration when picking what you're gonna feed your alligator. And, and you're gonna wanna feed them enough so that they're not emaciated, but you can easily overfeed them. So a broad, diverse diet, not too high in fat, and just don't go crazy. And care is pretty much done. Just make sure that water is really well filtered and, <laughs> and make sure that basking spot is warm enough. When it comes to hardiness, we give the American alligator a score of five out of five. These guys are solid. They're really, really solid. I mean, you know, you can get one that's captive bred. Even imports are imported from within the United States. Uh, and so they don't suffer from a lot of the problems that you have with imports from foreign nations. They can, however, live for a long time, many, many, many decades, and they're enormous and they're gonna be a serious pain in the neck. So you gotta keep that in mind. Like, this isn't something that you do just for fun for a month or two. This is something that you plan on having for the next 50 years. The biggest things though, are, you know, avoid obesity, give them a proper diet, proper basking spot, proper filtration for their water, and they're probably just gonna be rock solid for you. When it comes to availability, we give the American alligator a score of three out of five which is way more available than American alligators need to be. They're, they're way, way, way too available in a lot of places. And you know, why I say they're too available is because they're just horrible pets for most people. There's a very small fraction of people for whom an American alligator would even be anything short of a horrific idea. But you can totally get one, right? You can get them online, you can get them at expos, every now and then they pop up in pet stores, they're around. Uh, just don't buy this on a whim. They're gonna be cool for a few days. They're gonna be cool the whole time they're a baby, but sooner or later, it's gonna be six, eight, 10 feet long. And I mean, no matter what it is, something that large is kind of a nightmare. It's a monster. They're, it's, it, this is a monster. So keep that in mind. It's cute as a baby, will be a monster. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the American alligator a score of one out of five. Truth is, the alligator's cheap, right? This is the problem. A lot of people get it, it's like 100 bucks. You're like, yeah, I can afford $100 in a 20 gallon aquarium. No, that's not what you need. You're gonna need a, an extra room for your house, and that room has to have a swimming pool in it that's heated and filtered, and it's basically gotta have a tanning area. So you gotta be able to go tanning in there. Uh, UVA, UVB. It's, it's gonna cost a fortune, not the alligator, everything else. And that is why overall, I would not recommend alligators at all. I mean, you know, it seems like, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's not me personally. <laughs> it's not you. You are in the right place. For the right person, alligator, awesome. For everybody else, alligator, horrible idea, right? I wouldn't recommend them. They're a really, really bad idea. They are so cool, don't get me wrong. So stupendously awesome. One of my favorite animals to ever walk the planet. Um, but a really bad idea for a pet, right? Tigers are cool, but they make horrible pets. And this is a better idea than a tiger. So if you're like tiger or alligator, get an alligator, right? But if you're like alligator or almost any other kind of reptile, get that, get that. We've got lists upon lists of them. Uh, there are so many awesome reptiles out there. An alligator is the coolest, but you'll probably hate yourself for making this decision. And a lot of people make really bad decisions once they realize that they already made one bad decision. They release them, they create all kinds of problems. And actually, here to talk a little bit more about that is Kevin McCurley. This guy knows alligators, so listen to him. So now we're looking at an alligator. So crocodilians in general are actually, uh, as far as intelligence, they're a little misleading. Uh, they're not this, these thoughtless killing machines. They actually have a very uh, accomplished little uh, brain. Regardless of the size, they still, I mean, a honeybee gets a lot of stuff done. And we found that the honeybees and jumping spiders can uh, change their behavior, which means that they learn, which actually means that they're not just acting on instinct and they have a thought process. Alligators will recognize they're keepers, they know you by your voice, they know you by visual cues, uh, maybe even olfactory. Uh, they can maybe smell you, but it's, it's pretty much the very least, it's uh, the sound of our voice, our behaviors, and visual. So alligators uh, make wonderfully interesting little pets like this. I mean, this is as wonderful, it's not biting me, it's not doing anything, it's just sweet. You always have to remember there's another side of it. So, you know, a puppy, 
a Great Dane puppy grows into a very large dog that needs all sorts of you know meat based diet and with a lot of complications as far as health issues. Uh, alligators come with complications due to size and the management of that. Uh, people set out to keep this in, uh, you know, this could be in a 20 long fish tank or 30 or 55, and they start feeding it and they love to watch it eat. So the more food you put into it, the faster the growth rate. If it's indeed a male, it's even gonna grow faster than a female. So females, uh, you know, you have adult females that are breeding, you know, like I study alligators. So alligators, uh, about six and a half foot in that area, they're coming into the reproductive uh, size range. Whereas males, you know, males can go, you know, 11, 12 foot, like a, a 10 foot alligator female versus a 10 foot alligator male. That female is incredibly wide and thick and it's just a 10 foot alligator female is a monster 10 foot alligator male is once again a monster but it's not the same kind of thing because they can get even larger so as they start getting older and larger they start getting thicker so a lot of people such as myself we use these as uh, educational tools so if we go through all this work socializing this animal and basically proving and instilling that this animal can indeed trust us so don't bite us and then we can use this as an animal for a steward of all other cool reptiles and we show people and this captivates people by the interesting nature of this animal you put all this energy into it if i grow this animal too fast before long it's going to be four five six foot and at some point it's no longer going to be uh, great for my educational animals um, alligators can be target trained uh, i can easily show them a shape or a color or a design Every time I show you this on the end of a, a rod, that means you're gonna get food. So you're gonna get sometimes these very you know, reactive things where they're, they're biting and they're jumping around, they're super, super excited. And you can target train them so only when they see this will they actually think it's food time. So other times when you go in there and play with them uh, to manage the animal, to clean it, the animal's just gonna act in its uh, thinking mode. It's not gonna be excited and that, but they're so smart that you can actually achieve that. But if you take this animal and you decide, oh, it's three feet long and it bit me or I don't wanna feed it anymore, it's too much of a pain, I go throw it in the pond, what you're doing is you're basically uh, creating a hardship for all responsible reptile keepers because you've rid yourself of this animal and ultimately the animal's not designed to be in that ecosystem, uh, probably won't even live ultimately once it gets cold or whatever. And uh, it usually it, it finds its way to the news media and people are talking about rogue alligators and endangering people and then people keeping exotic animals shouldn't be allowed to have these animals because they're so irresponsible. And it's amazing, one negative will outweigh thousands and thousands of episodes of positive type education, something that I do, something that Clint does, and we're trying to show these animals in a very um, realistic but positive light because these are truly wonderful animals that we really enjoy, but it's very good to be uh, thoroughly uh, versed in what you're gonna do. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. I guarantee you dinosaurs weren't cooler than this, right? Like, especially the feathered ones, you know. Cassowary might have a lot of those beat in. I mean, they were really cool, but not cooler. I want those terrestrial crocodilians. Oh, you're so cool, though. Why are you so cool? I think this is the coolest animal in the world.